when you think secondary weapon or sidearm, I'm sure the first thing that comes into your mind is a pistol. Maybe it's your starting sidearm, or the first gun you come across, but the pistol provides you with a certain sense of security that never leaves you as long as you have the ammo for it. It lacks the raw power of more conventional combat firearms like assault rifles, SMGs, or the occasional shotgun, but it's quick to draw, fast firing, and great for finishing off enemies you'd otherwise be just short of taking down. In moments like this, the pistol can feel like a clutch, life-saving best friend. And that's just as true in most other games as it is in TF2. The pistol is the secondary weapon of choice for two classes, the Scout and the Engineer. It's equipped with a 12-shot clip, a rapid-firing semi-automatic speed, and a quick and snappy reload perfect for whipping it out and spraying away at your enemies. Wait, what? It's designed to pair with the class's primary weapons of choice, the Scattergun and the Shotgun covering their mid to long range weaknesses by doing just as good if not superior damage without wasting precious shells or reload time. When used in conjunction with these weapons, the pistol can work as a softener should you choose to engage at mid range so that you can finish the enemy off with a meat shot or two, or it can be used as a finisher if you run out of primary ammo in the middle of a fight. However, when all else fails, one should never fail to underestimate the sheer strength of the pistol when used as what is effectively a primary for short bursts of time. When the going gets so rough that even reloading a single scattergun shell is too much to ask for, this measly little gun can still pack an incredible punch to those who truly understand the power of the pistol. For the engineer, he only has one option for the pistol, the stock pistol, but he makes up for this in more than a few ways. For starters, it's the quintessential battle engineer secondary, pairing perfectly with combat primaries like the Widowmaker and Frontier Justice. It's the go-to weapon for when you're using a primary that burns twice as bright, but has the potential to last half as long. Not to mention, beyond being a good finisher in the event of some serious whiffing, it's a risk-free option for dealing some damage to enemies you know you're not going to need a full-blown crit meat shot to kill, so you can save your precious metal or stored crits for more valuable targets while the pistol takes care of some cannon fodder that your primary need not concern itself with. It also pairs very well with the shotgun and panic attack if you don't feel like using your secondary slot to make either the enemy's explosive classes or entire team commit mass suicide. These more consistent primaries give you a similar playstyle to that of the scout, but with more going on in terms of resource management. In much the same way that the pistol benefits scout's playstyle, it benefits the more aggressive engineer who is able to get up in his enemy's face and land some clean mate shots on them. It's good for advancing on a high value target who's getting away from your primary's range, sniping away at an enemy engineer's buildings, doubling up on the damage of your own sentry by hard focusing on the target your sentry is aiming for, or else retreating while laying down some suppressive fire once you need to get everyone, everyone back, back to, to the, the base, base partner. partner. The pistol is also a better combat tool than the Pompson is in general, which is not a great look for the Pompson, but definitely makes the pistol look a lot better in comparison. To top it off, the engineer's pistol has the funny 200 reserve ammo, which basically turns you into a weaker heavy who has to occasionally pause to reload. Despite the simplicity of the pistol, with engineer, I find that the primary strength comes from versatility. It's able to work in a multitude of different loadouts for different situations and playstyles. Battle NG is an obvious one to pair it with, especially with the likes of the Widowmaker and Frontier Justice, but as a pure defensive engineer, it can still be very useful. It's easy to justify the use of the Wrangler in these situations, the same way the Nazis justified their actions in the Nuremberg Trials, but in the situations where you still get rushed down or have to deal with a spy, having only the Rescue Ranger and your wrench of choice to fall back on isn't going to cut it all the time, especially with annoying trick-stabby spies and having a nice consistent damage dealer at your side is great for defending yourself against these attackers, or even going on the offensive if you need to help take care of a threat outside of your sentry's range. Engineer as a class can often be caught with his pants down, whether it's without a sentry, without primary ammo, or without the support of his entire fucking team, so having a nice, reliable, guaranteed source of good range damage always by your side is a massive benefit that can't be understated. 
so it's pretty much always my go-to engineer secondary. It can be thought that the shotgun is sort of the secondary weapon to the sentry gun, and if that's the case, then I think the pistol does a fair job at being the second secondary. And I think it's obvious why people want a new pistol in the engineer secondary slot so badly. The stock pistol and engineer gets a solid A rank for me. It does a great job in pretty much any situation without being annoying as shit like his other two secondaries. Scout's version of the stock pistol is more of the same, but slightly different. For starters, only 36 reserve ammo. I know. I know. However, he makes up for this with a much cooler reload animation, where he flips the gun itself into the waiting clip in just over a second. He even manages to do so faster than the engineer's reload. That definitely earns him a few style points. Now those may be the only functional differences between the two versions of the stock pistol, but where the main difference lies is in playstyle. Scout's high mobility means he's much more effective at using the pistol to get into enemies' faces to deal the insane amount of damage a single pistol clip can do at close range, which is more than enough to kill a full health soldier even if he's using the battalion's backup. His mobility is also fantastic for situations where you need to dodge enemies' attacks while still pumping out constant damage. The pistol's very useful when you're ready to rush down an enemy, but want to keep some scattergun shots handy in your back pocket. You soften him up with the pistol, and then finish with the scatter gun. But this also works in reverse. If you're in the thick of it, you need to keep dishing out damage, but the reload time of 6 scattergun shots is just too much to ask for, then go guns blazing with your pistol and clean up everyone in sight. Hell, the pistol is such a great damage dealer that in either of these situations, you can end up killing injured enemies well before you intend to. You don't need to stick with this being just the initiator, or just the finisher to a fight. With its consistent mid to close range damage, it's great at pestering down enemies like Pyros just out of the range of their flamethrowers so you never have to get touched by a single flame particle and never even have to switch your weapons or waste primary ammo that might be more useful on other targets like demos and heavies. It takes precision aim and tracking to pull all this off, but when just about every pistol shot connects to an enemy, ugh, oh, it's a thing of beauty. Seriously, hitting most if not all of your shots with the pistol in a fight is like headshot medic drops and double dogs for me. I can't get enough of it. The stream of near constant damage is great for keeping the pressure on your enemies as opposed to short bursts of damage with your scattergun. And being able to put out all this damage in a stream makes certain tasks like taking down multiple low health enemies or tracking down invisible spies much easier. On the subject of making things easier, due to Scout's more aggressive playstyle, he runs into sentry guns more often than he'd like to but with a quick flank route to a sightline on that sentry, or sheer aggression in the face of a battle engine putting a mini up, the pistol is your best friend when it comes to taking a sentry down, especially with the aid of the shortstop. And speaking of engineers, while the engineer is able to double up his pistol damage with his sentry guns, the scout is able to do the same thing with his own second secondary, the Rap Assassin, which can easily help drain an enemy's health to zero in no time. To me, Scout's pistol is the perfect example of a secondary weapon. It gets an A rank too. But, Scout has two more pistols to choose from. How do they stack up to the might of the stock pistol? Well, each of them tackles it in a different way. Let's talk about the more utility focused of the two first. The Winger is a great weapon, and that says a lot because I think it's a decent contender for Scout's worst secondary. So yeah, when his worst secondary is something that's still a fantastic and viable choice, you know that Scout's secondary roster might just be a bit busted. The Winger trades off 7 ammo in the clip for 15% more power in each shot and a 25% higher jump height while the weapon is out. Now all of these stats change how you use the winger compared to the pistol dramatically. The lack of ammo is a big one, since it not only gives you much less room for error in your burst before you have to reload, which can make finishing off enemies a lot harder, but it also means you'll do far less damage overall even if you hit all your shots. While the stock pistol can take down a fully jacked up Islander Demo Knight or Battalion's backup soldier with a single clip, a winger clip, even with the base damage increase, barely manages to kill a light class. That's not to say it's worthless in terms of damage, 
In fact, its ability to give you more movement capability while still being able to deal damage at the same time is what makes it such great competition for the Atomizer, which fulfills largely the same function. Or the Force of Nature, which asks you to trade quite a lot in exchange for its mobility boost. However, if you want to use these weapons together to become the ultimate mobility machine, or with the jumping boost the Soda Popper gives you, you can basically reach the skybox on most maps in the game, no sweat. The Winger's jump boost is really where its strength lies. It's amazing what a mere 25% boost in jump height can do for rollouts, ambushes, close saves, flank routes, and so much more. It's enough that plenty of previously harmless declines in the map will now be enough to break your ankles if you double jump too carelessly, which can lead to some pretty funny deaths. I mentioned versatility as a strength of the Engineer's pistol, and while I think that's true of the Winger as well, I think a lot of that versatility strength lies in your creativity and adaptability as a player. It's a weapon that might take a little bit of time getting used to remembering the utility of until you think, wait a second, I know how to get around this obstacle to flank the combo, but once you're in the winger mindset, it's an incredible tool to have at your disposal. I think that while the pistol works well as a secondary weapon, the winger works better as a secondary utility, much like something like the bonk or mad milk. While it can deal damage, that's clearly not the focus of it, meaning the better you are with your scattergun, the more attractive of an option the winger is compared to scouts who might need to fall back on their pistol shots more often than not. The winger can still save you in a pinch and dish out some decent damage, but its function as a weapon is really secondary to the utility it provides. Overall, it's still a solid choice though. I'll give it a B ranking. It specializes a lot in utility, and to its great benefit, but the lack of combat application makes it feel a little bit lacking in certain situations. The final weapon we're going to be covering does not have that problem, having mastered both combat practicality and utility. The Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol. What a contentious history this thing's had. When it first came out, it was pretty much indisputably the best pistol in the game, giving the scout a passive 15 extra health at all times and no fall damage while active, at effectively no cost outside of taking extra fire damage and having a slower firing speed. But the sheer survivability it gave you just for having it equipped was insane. It meant you could run the candy cane and not insta-die to grenades, so I would always pair the two with the shortstop to get the boosted health from health packs back when that's the effect that the shortstop gave you. Then, the pocket pistol got nerfed to the point of easily being Scout's worst secondary in the game, with a passive damage vulnerability to all sources while active. Basically, punishing the shit out of you for ever taking it out, in exchange for being able to heal you for 3 health points per hit. It was a paradoxical design. It healed you too slowly because of the slow firing speed to get any use out of it, and holding it out for too long just meant you ended up taking more damage while it was out, meaning you needed to get more healing. It just fucking sucked. Basically, if it wasn't for Jungle Inferno removing the damage vulnerability, increasing the firing speed by 15%, and giving you the mere downside of 3 less bullets in the clip, this would be getting a bad weapon academy instead of going right back to being the single best pistol in the game. It's a weird roundabout path the pocket pistol has taken. Nearly everything about the stock pistol still shines here, but now with the added bonus of health on hit and faster damage output. It's kind of shocking how fast a 15% firing speed increase feels compared to stock. It almost feels like a tiny machine gun. It's this factor paired with the heal on hit that makes this such a devastating weapon. It means that not only can you punch holes in people fast, you're getting rewarded for it on multiple levels, and can oftentimes come out of a battle healthier than when you entered it, or just nearly survive an encounter you'd otherwise have no hope of scraping your way out of. It's the same base concept as the initial iteration of the pocket pistol. You trade pure damage for an increase in survivability. The problem with the initial design was that it was completely passive, and meant you basically didn't even need to use the pocket pistol at all in order to get the benefits out of it. Which, to be honest, even when I equipped it all the time, I rarely ever did except when I had no other option. You can definitely see the thought process and refinement the TF team have gone through when trying to perfect this core concept. We want a pistol that boosts scout survivability in exchange for damage. Is the survivability boost too passive? Give it an active benefit in the form of heal on hit that can potentially heal more in a pinch 
than the scout could previously get passively. Are the new downsides too punishing for a weapon designed to give you increased survivability? Rework the downsides and give it a new punch in terms of faster firepower. The problem is, they overtweaked it again. The pocket pistol is right back where we started at being the best one in the vast majority of situations, and my viewers seem to agree with that sentiment. Even against sentries, which you'd think the stock pistol would have an advantage in because it's able to do more damage in a single clip, the pocket pistol really doesn't suffer too much because of the faster firing speed. It means the engineer has to struggle a lot harder to keep up with the amount of damage being pumped into his gun in a short burst of time. And yet, like other overpowered weapons we've talked about, the pocket pistol seems to fall into a sort of Gerardi or Bizarre Bargain scenario, where despite it being blatantly busted, no one really seems to care. And I think it's for similar reasons as the Bizarre Bargain, which is, the counterplay is basically the same. That is to say, just shoot the scout. While a scout is able to get 27 health back in a single clip, that's usually not enough to cross major damage thresholds. It comes into play far more often in messier fights, where splash damage and chip damage really come into play more frequently than direct hits and meat shots. You also can't really judge how much it affects Scout's ability to preserve his forward momentum after a fight without needing to go to a health pack in the majority of situations. If Scout kills someone, and is immediately able to move forward specifically because of the pocket pistol, you're not really going to notice that if you're just fighting him solo. It's not like the kunai where you helplessly watch as your entire team gets backstabbed, and no matter what you do or how many shots you hit, it won't make a difference since your teammates apparently just don't have ears or something. It's fighting a scout at full health versus fighting a scout at full health slightly earlier than you normally would. The only time the pocket pistol is going to feel frustrating to fight is after you've already died to the scout and seen that he's survived with single digit health as a result of the pocket pistol. And even then, in that situation plenty of players could easily attribute the same thing to random bullet spreads screwing them over and not even consider the pocket pistol's place in that exchange, depending on their class and server of choice at least. It's a bizarre case, but ultimately, I think the pocket pistol is one small nerf away from being perfectly balanced and fun to use. It just needs something like a small damage penalty to make it so it's good at doing some damage quickly and getting health back while being less effective at sustained damage the way the pistol is. Still fun to use, still has a niche, but not objectively the best in almost every situation anymore. At the moment though, the pocket pistol gets an S ranking. Without question, the best pistol in the game. And that's the pistols covered. It's pretty funny how these small sidearms can make a massive impact while playing the game. I guess the engineer was right all along. Sometimes, Sometimes you, you just need, need a little, little less gun. gun. It's hard to go wrong when picking one of the pistols. They're some of the best designed secondary weapons in the game, to the point where even the overpowered one isn't all that annoying apparently. I've never seen anyone complain that the pistols are too weak, even on something like Engineer. There it's underutilized because his other options are so ridiculous that it's difficult to justify giving them up unless you're playing Battle Engie. And even then, the Wrangler is notoriously cancerous in that regard. The beauty of the pistols lies in their simplicity and constant practicality, and people who know this will always be happy to show unprepared enemies the power of the pistol. What the hell is this? Okay, you're just dead. What were you aiming at? Homeboy, that was behind you! 